Hey guys, this is Jeff at Tentacore. Today I want to talk to you about different modes of concealed carry. For most of modern handgun carry, the most popular way to conceal a gun has been on the hip. And typically that's going to be done either outside the waistband or inside the waistband on the hip. And now certainly in the last five to ten years, appendix carry has been really popular. But the thing that has been the most consistent and the most widespread for the longest period of time is going to be some sort of hip carry. Inside the waistband in general is going to be more concealable than outside the waistband. And it's going to be more concealable because the gun is closer to the body. So it's concealable, it's secure, it is stable, and it is consistent. For inside the waistband hip carry, typically you're going to be at around 330 or further back. And typically what you're going to find is some sort of cant where the grip of the gun is rotated forward. And what that does is basically if I leave this gun like this and I put it on my hip, the grip sticks out. If I take this and I rotate it, I basically put, put this in a situation where kind of the bottom point here, up here, I have more balance and then I can pull that in. And typically, particularly for most guys, they have a little spot on their hip where the gun and kind of the grip and the tang kind of nestle in there and conceal really quite well. Inside the waistband hip carry is really accessible. It's in the same spot all the time. It also works well with retention because you can um, bring your hand on top of the gun and pin the gun in and then it's consistent It's consistently in the same place all the time and whether you are carrying inside the waistband or outside the waistband Or maybe you're a law enforcement or military or a competition shooter and you have some sort of hip carry holster It is all consistent all the way through Appendix carry has been around for a long long time. It has certainly become much more popular over the last five to ten years or so and so appendix carry works well because you are able to conceal really well. If you just take a gun and you stick it in your waistband and there's no purposeful design to that, it actually doesn't conceal that well because the grip is gonna stick out. And so where appendix carry really shines is when you get a holster that rotates the grip in and then rotates the top of the gun into the body. And when, it, when you have a holster that does that, whether it's some sort of claw or camming bar or some sort of wedge or body contour that is helping to do that, it makes for a very concealable gun that probably allows you to carry with a broader range of clothing as long as it's untucked so you can wear tighter, more fitted clothing. From a retention perspective, the gun is right in front of your body, so it is close to the person. It is also close to you, so you're, you can be aware of it. It's easy to pin the gun in place, either with your hand or with your arm arm and so that certainly is an advantage. If the bad guy knows you have a gun, the gun is in the spot that's easy for them to take. So um, it's, on the one hand it's easy for you to pin it in place but on the other hand it's very accessible to that person. Appendix carry is very consistent and so consistent location of carry, consistent grip, consistent draw, um, consistent speed. So from a performance standpoint it works really quite well. Next, we're gonna to switch to outside the waistband carry. So outside the waistband carry, the most conventional place, even from a concealment perspective, is gonna be on the hip. So some sort of on the belt holster with some sort of cover garment over it. Again, it is very consistent, retains the gun well, that you can pin the gun in place if needed. Also, if you have the right holster with attachments that are offset from the gun, it can be pretty concealable. And so that can work pretty well. But it, obviously it's not gonna be as concealable as inside the waistband because it's gonna sit out further from your body. The next position we're gonna talk about for outside the waistband carry is gonna be cross draw. So cross draw is not a super common position. I think the origins of it are gonna be from a seated position. So whether you're driving in a car or riding on a horse and the muzzle of it basically points out and away from the body, right? And allows you to sit there in a seated position quite easily. Anytime you're reaching across your body, it's really easy for a bad guy to pin your arm. So that is a thing that is a concern. So if you have a specific need where you're seated a lot and you want to have a mode of carry that is specific to your seated position, then cross draw might work okay. Carrying something specific for seated probably isn't gonna work well for most people and how they live their lives. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is non-waistband carry. So there's a bunch of different alternatives. Most of these things that are non-waistband carry are unique. 
and they're not wrong, but they're not common, and they're not common because generally they don't work as well as waistband carry. The, generally speaking, the reason why we have pants and belt loops and belts and why most people who do some sort of work carry their tools on their waistband is because it's really comfortable to carry it there. It's a good spot to support the weight. It's also very accessible. And generally, you're gonna to wanna to have a very specific reason for why that unusual mode of carry makes sense for that circumstance. The first thing we're gonna talk about is shoulder holsters. There are vertical carry shoulder holsters. There are also horizontal carry shoulder holsters. Generally speaking, the horizontal ones are going to work better as a more natural angle that kind of as you bring your, your arm across here, unnatural to can't your wrist like this to be able to get a vertical carry shoulder holster. If you carry a lot of weight on your waistband, oftentimes people will try to get it off their waistband and get it onto their shoulders, which is totally reasonable if you're gonna carry a whole bunch of weight all the time every day. Most of the people that carry in a shoulder holster, I think kind of the origins of that are doing it for convenience and they're not doing it for high performance skill. Instead of carrying it on my waist, if I can put this thing over here and I can put my handcuffs or my extra mag pouch or whatever, and then I can carry whatever, I can wear whatever jacket, pants, shorts, whatever. Um, it is mostly a thing of convenience. And at this point, there are alternatives that work better. And just frankly, we were talking about it around the shop of like, what is a good example today of when someone should wear or could wear a shoulder holster? The thing that I've historically thought about was a suit jacket but at this point, I think there are better alternatives to that. So I have a hard time thinking through that. The next one we're gonna talk about is pocket carry. So the thing with pocket carry is it requires a really small gun. It requires relatively big pockets and relatively loose pants. So you kind of have to have all three of those things working together. If you have all three of those things working together, then you would want some sort of holster that removes the outline shape of the gun. So it's not obvious that you have a gun in your pocket. You also want something that's going to cover the trigger guard. And then you're also not going to want to put anything else in that pocket because you're not going to throw a gun in there and some keys and some other stuff. And then the keys work their way into the trigger guard and the gun goes off or you go in to fish out the gun when you need it and you pull out you know, a gun and a chewing gum stick and a flashlight and some keys and they're all kind of hanging there. Like if you're gonna do that, you wanna dedicate that pocket just to carrying your gun. Pocket carry can make sense. Usually it's a thing of convenience. So someone doesn't wanna take the time to put a belt and a holster and everything else on and or they wanna tuck in their shirt and they don't wanna deal with all of that. Usually it's gonna be a micro compact gun Oftentimes it's gonna be a sub caliber. It's not even gonna be like nine millimeter. You're gonna have like some 25 auto or something like that. Sometimes you can get away with a small subcompact revolver like a J-frame can work well. And a J-frame also works well because it doesn't have the same square edges. That's really obvious if you put like a Glock 43 in your pocket, it's kind of obvious what that is. And so that, that is a thing to consider. The next thing is gonna be ankle carry. So ankle carry is an alternative mode of carry. I carried ankle a long time, but I didn't as a primary mode of carry. It was for a secondary or a backup gun as a police officer. Usually when people are carrying ankle carry, they're doing it as a, for a secondary gun and not as a primary gun. You have tools in your waistband, they're easy to access. A tool on your ankle is hard to access. It can be very concealable and very discreet. There's obviously you have to have pants that are wide enough that don't print. Another thing that I know people that do sometimes is they will do two pairs of socks because the thing to consider when you do ankle carry is when you sit down, if your pant cuff comes up, is it exposing the bottom of the holster? The first sock is more normal. The second sock actually goes over the top of the ankle carry holster to try to reduce that flagging of the holster. Ankle carry holster is a reasonable alternative, but again, it's like, do you have a very specific purpose where this thing makes the most sense? And it probably doesn't make sense as a universal mode of carry. The thing that makes most of those non-waistband carry options like shoulder holsters, pocket carry, ankle carry obsolete are harness belt systems like the Filster Enigma. There's a few things out there. The Filster Enigma seems to be the best, right? It's basically a harness or a belt that's worn underneath your clothing or between like a, your undergarments and your outer garments. And it allows you to carry in a normal belt position or allows you to even, depending on your body shape and size, allows you to move it around. So it's maybe slightly below the waistline or slightly above the waistline in a way that is 
actually more concealable and maybe more comfortable for you. So things like that, like the Filster Enigma, allow for um, an alternative to conventional waistband carry that I think makes things like a shoulder holster pocket carry or ankle carry mostly obsolete if you're looking to carry a primary gun. The final thing I want to talk about is off-body carry. So off-body carry is going to be like in a backpack, in a purse, in some sort of sling bag, or in some sort of crossbody or waist bag. The challenge with off-body carry is going to be accessibility. And so if you take your bag off your purse or your backpack or whatever and you put it down, it's not with you anymore, so it's hard to access your gun. It's also arguable that the gun is no longer secure because it's not on your person. Because generally to be secure, it's gonna be on your person or it's gonna be in a safe or it's gonna be in your hand. And so as soon as you put it in a bag and you put the bag down in a corner and you walk away from it, now you have a live weapon that is no longer secure and that is a liability. And so if you're gonna do off-body carry, I guess I would argue that you need to store it in a secure location, like inside of a locked cabinet or maybe in the trunk of your car, depending on the circumstances you're in, or it needs to be on your person. So if it's on your person, something like a purse, depending on how the purse is slung, may or may not be easy to access the thing. Also, again, if you just throw a gun in the bottom of your purse, along with your lipstick and your keys and your chewing gum and like all the other things, like just having a gun floating around there is not safe at all. So that would be an unacceptable way to carry. The gun needs to be in its own compartment and it needs to have the trigger guard covered in some way. This is a fanny or a waist bag from um, Sock P and Vertex. And so there is a dedicated compartment in here for a gun and there's a loop here for attaching your holster. So I basically, I could take this holster, I could have it in my waistband like this, and then I could decide I'm gonna take it out of my waistband and I basically could just clip it inside here and now it is secure inside there and my gun is also secure in there um, and it's protected. So I can show, throw a pair of shorts on or swim trunks or whatever and go somewhere and I don't have to worry about concealing it on my person and I can sling it in some way, right? I can sling it here and the gun is relatively convenient and easy for me to get. Um, the challenge is oftentimes people are gonna do something like this though with it. And this makes sense, but now the gun's behind me. Could someone else come up and take the gun out of there? Or if I need the gun, I have to first get the gun in the right spot then open the bag and pull it out. And again, this mode of carry is, is gonna be better than not having a gun at all. It's not as good as having it on your waistband. So off body carry makes sense. But again, as soon as you set it down, like say you're driving your car, you take it off, you put it on your dashboard, you put it on your center console, like that's great. It's gonna be really hard to draw the gun off the bag in your dashboard, right? And then if something happens in an emergency, what do you do? Do you get out of your car and go deal with that emergency? Or do you run away if you need to run away, you get in an accident, whatever the thing is, and then this is still there in your car and you now don't have your gun and it's unsecure. And so that is a thing that people don't really think about. If you're gonna carry in a bag and it's kind of off body carry, but you just have a rule, you never take it off. So that'd be one way to handle it. Or if you do take it off, you gotta be careful where you put it. Have you trained putting it back on? So if you take it off when you get in your car, have you habituated the idea that you're always gonna grab that bag, sling the thing, before you leave the car. So any carry where the trigger guard is not covered up is a no-go. Trigger guard needs to be covered up. Shoving your gun in your pocket, throwing the gun in your bag, that is a no-go. The reason why I carry the same way every time is because I'm also not willing to put the time and energy and resources into training some odd mode of carry for the half a day every two years that it would be needed to figure that out. And really most people aren't. But So I think most people who are carrying in a variety of ways, not everybody, but most people, are not putting the time and energy and resources into training how to use that weird different way of carry. And they probably shouldn't be. The people who should be probably do. And they put a bunch of time and energy into figuring out how to draw from the ankle. When I carried a backup gun from the ankle, that was something that I practice on a regular basis was drawing the gun and use, utilizing the gun from the ankle. There would be other people that I worked with, they would take their ankle gun, and when they qualled, they'd stick it and put it in a hip carry holster. And it's like, well, that didn't make any sense. People think those things are cool for whatever reason or interesting. And they're not willing to dedicate the time and energy and resources needed to be proficient at it under the pressure of the event. And so I think that is important. 
and I don't think most people are willing to do it. And they probably shouldn't carry a gun in that location unless they put the effort into figuring it out. The primary mode of carry should be inside the waistband, on your hip, or appendix. If you choose to carry in some other way, then make sure that you're putting the time and energy and resources into training to be proficient in those other modes of carry.